Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stewart Paintings. On today's video I thought I would share me painting this original woodland scene. It's an acrylic painting that I paint over the top with oil paints and I thought I would share to you the footage and show you how I go about creating one of my original paintings. So I thought even though the painting took me about a day and a half to paint, I thought why not speed up the footage and teach you some lessons and techniques that I use to make my work look more realistic. So that being said, if you would like to follow along and recreate your own version at home, let's get into it. Now here we have a brief outline if any of you would like to pause the video and use it as a reference photo. All I've done is I painted the sky a really light white purple and I've just used blue just to block in the trees. Now forget about the path because we're going to get rid of that. I made a boo-boo in the painting. I didn't like the path and I wanted it to look more realistic with the light so I just added some leafy grass. So this is the finished painting. You can always again if you want to pause the video use that as a reference photo to copy while you're working towards it. Now these are the colours I use. They are yellow, orange, green, purple, blue, brown, black and white. Now all colours, all shades in this painting video you can use from these core colours. Now I had to speed the footage up a little bit because simply for the fact that this painting took me an awful long time. Being that it's a global pandemic at the moment I've got lots of responsibilities away from painting and being that me and my wife both work it was just really really hard to um, finish this painting in the um, light which you will see later on in the video when it gets dark <laughs> outside and being that London at this time of year is really really gloomy and dark it's just really really hard to keep going. So all I've done is I'm just trying to create the impression of leaves by leaving gaps in the underpainting. And all I've done is I've mixed some brown, some orange and a little bit of green just to create a nice tan colour for the first impression of those leaves. By just giving the impression, all I'm doing is I'm creating the texture of leaves and branches. And again, we're just going to use some orange to make it lighter because the light source is going to be between these two little trees and this big main tree that I've painted a darker blue. So all I'm doing is adding some orange to add some heat because the sun is going to be behind that and it's going to get brighter towards the sun. So all I'm doing now is I'm mixing some yellow into the orange and I've got a really nice sort of golden yellow color so it's not bright yellow it's got a little bit of orange in it and what that's going to do is it's just going to make a nice transition between the yellow orange just so it's not too harsh transition on your eyes so all I'm doing I'm just blocking in the trees where I used a pencil for once I've got a bit of a streaky marks but don't worry about that if it's rough and ready we're just gonna make it all blocked in so don't worry if it looks scruffy like normal and all I'm going to do is I'm going to add some green to the mix. So I'm going to add some sap green to the brown just to create a dark tone for that corner because I want to make my corners dark so the viewer concentrates in the middle of my composition. And again, all I'm doing is just blending it into the tan color. And as you can see there, from the yellows to the orange to the tan to the green, what it does is it creates a really natural transition between the hots near the sun and the cools where it gets shadier. Now to bring something forward in a painting you can make it darker and what that will do is it will make it look like it's in the foreground and to make something look far away you can create a more pastel lighter tone and what that will do will make it look like it's in the background. So all I'm doing is I've got this branch that's hanging towards the viewer so it's going to be a lot darker and I'm just using that same colour just while it's on my brush just to darken up these sort of shrubbery that I'm going to have in the background and this corner because I want that corner to be dark but to push the background back and to make these trees further back I want them to be more of a lighter tone so I want them to have a bit more white in them so all I've done is I've added a bit of white to some yellow some orange a little bit of brown and a tiny bit of blue because this area this parts of the trees even though we're just blocking them in they're going to be much more lighter 
then towards the right hand side which are going to be a bit more bluer so to the mix I'm just adding a little bit of blue and a little bit of green because the light source is coming from the from the left hand side and it will get cooler as it moves towards the right so we want to get darker because it's going to get cooler because it's getting less sunlight and it's going to get um, more shade but we don't want to add too much dark tone we still want to keep it very pastel because we want to make those um, trees look like they're in the far background and we don't want to bring them too far forward so we just still want to just block them in but in a very pastel tone just so it keeps them further back so now that I'm finished with the trees and they're all starting to be blocked in, all I'm doing, I'm just using the same colours that I had on my palette to again just create the illusion of leaves. Now, as I keep saying to you, the heat source will be coming from the left hand side. It just looks like the light source is hitting these edges of all these leaves and creating a nice texture and it just tricks your eye so by using warm tones such as oranges and yellows and that sort of tan color what you're doing is you're just tricking the viewers eyes because as I say we're gonna we're gonna soften this area up using a blender brush but by leaving lots of gaps and creating lots of texture for things like shrubbery branches and trees it's creating the illusion of depth in the painting it's looking like forest and sort of um, texture in the background so by just using that warmer tone as it goes up towards the sunlight again just leaving gaps we're just trying to create the impression of far away trees and bushes just all the sort of forest sort of depths that goes further into the background just so we just don't have just a blank space it just gives our work a little more realism and as i say we're going to soften it all up with a blender brush but just having all these impressions will trick your eye later and it will just show up and just look a bit more realistic now as i've come up to the top hand uh, right side all i've done is i've mixed some green some blue a tiny bit of brown and lots of white to give this really gray green look and again it's just to make the tone look further back it's just to give the illusion that the color is sucked out because they're further towards the sky so they have less color and they're further back now these trees will get darker as they move towards the viewer so we're going to add a bit more brown to our mix so it's going to be a bit darker than previously because it's coming closer. So these ones are going to be a little bit closer, but not too close. So just by adding a little bit darker tone to the ones previously and the ones that are in the far background, you can just add a little bit more white and we're just blocking them in. So again, don't worry if you've got any outline showing or you've got any scruffy parts. It's quite to be expected. It's all going to look scruffy for a while. That's the joy of painting, it all comes together towards the end. Sometimes in my videos, the video looks pretty, pretty bad to the last 10 minutes because it all comes together right until the last bit. And that's the part of being an artist. You've got to have faith in your work to see what the finished results will be in your mind and work towards that. So look, all I'm doing is just getting slightly dark by adding more uh, blues, a little bit of black and some burnt umber to your mix we get this lovely dark tone and what that does look it just brings that tree towards the viewer so that one's just because obviously we painted it a darker blue I know which ones are going to be a bit darker and obviously this one here I'm just doing that edge we're going to create some light effect on it later but just add in some blue some black and burnt sienna creates this gorgeous tone here it's not black it almost looks like black it's got a tint of blue but it just looks more realistic and more natural it's just blue black and burnt sienna so an orangey brown so by just using darker tones just at the base of my tree and at the top of the tree what that's doing is just bringing it forward but obviously in the middle that's going to be where the sunlight is hitting and by using a orangey brown so some brown and some orange tiny little bit of blue you can make just darker tops of these trees and these are the, the trees that aren't getting enough sunlight and what that does is again it just frames the painting it just frames the composition as I say sometimes when you're working from a photo it doesn't work quite as well as a painting so as I said previously, I'm quite happy to show you how I go about creating one of my more detailed videos and filming it today. But unlike a normal painting tutorial, you'll see how I go back and forth, not just straight 
this is A to B to C. It's more like you go back and forth because sometimes with these forest paintings, there's so many layers to it, you just have to keep working it. So all I'm doing is I'm using the pastel tone that we used in the top right hand corner and I'm just going over bits and again, it's just to create the illusion of texture. So I have difference between the colds, the shadows and the hots and I'm creating the illusion of leaves from the trees. Now a lot of people ask me what sort of brushes I use. Well at the moment I'm just using a fine liner brush and I'm just poking holes where I want things like leaves to be and again I'm just leaving gaps in the underpainting so some of that darker tone can um, shine through. But I don't use very expensive um, brushes, I just use very cheap ones because I go through so many because obviously I do this for a living. But don't worry about your types of brushes, you just need a combination of sizes, not so much expensive ones, you just need a combination of round headed, flat headed, fine liners and things like fan brushes and that makes your life a lot easier. Now I'm using this really lovely golden yellow tone which is just yellow and a little bit of orange and some white and that's going to be really where the sun is at its strongest and is making the impression on those leaves. So again just using a fine liner brush, it's not expensive one. It's just a cheapy one, but it's very fine. I can create really fine leaves and detail and things like really fine branches to make my work look more realistic. So by just using a really fine brush, you can just dab in little impressions of leaves. Now this is very time consuming. And as I say, this whole painting took me um, about a day and a half to film. Um, so I speeded the footage up for all of you guys just so I can show you how I go about doing it. But as I say, sometimes in painting things go totally wrong. Things can distract you. Um, you can step away from your painting and just not enjoy it. So sometimes you have to come back to it. You have to um, sleep on it and just um, rework it the next day. So all I'm doing again, just at the bottom of these trees, I'm adding that same sort of bluey, greeny brown tone. So it's just blue, green, white and brown. And again, it's just to make it a difference between the hottest part of the tree where it's getting the most light and the darkest part of the tree at the bottom, just so there's a nice, clear, realistic tone. As I've been trying to show you in all the basic um, tutorials that I um, have here on YouTube, I'm trying to show you how you can trick the viewer's eyes using tones. You don't necessarily have to be a very skilled artist to create really realistic work. It's all in the tones. So things like your drawing and things like um, your intuition will get better the more you paint but by knowing the tones and knowing how to get dark as you move across in the painting and how to use light you can use eyes and make your work look much more realistic without having a super amount of skills because as I say it's just all about tricking the viewers eyes by using tones the further away from the light source, the darker we want. So just adding green, a little bit of brown to that green, and a little bit of blue, a tiny bit of black. We've got this lovely dark tone. And again, by leaving the gaps, by leaving the lighter green, the lighter tan color, and the um, yellowy orange underneath, what that does is it creates the illusion of texture and it gives the illusion of shadows and highlights. So what you're doing, I know it's very time consuming, but what you're doing is you're adding all the darks on top and it gives a complete contrast between the highlights and the shadows. Because you wouldn't be able to see the highlights if you didn't have the shadows for them to stand out against and you wouldn't see the shadows if you didn't have the highlights for them to shadow out. They go together. So just think in real life, if you didn't have things you didn't like, how would you know what you did like? <laughs> so it's just the same in painting. You need the darks and the lights for them to complement one another. Now to give your trees a bit of texture to make them look a bit more realistic, all I tend to do is I go down one side of the tree and I just draw lines going across. And what they are with all the knocks and bumps and all the bark, and by just using a blue, a little bit of brown and some white, a little bit of black just to um, make the color more neutral you have a nice pastel shadow tone but again we don't want it too dark because we don't want to bring those trees really forward so by just adding a little bit of that sort of orangey tan color we're just going over and rebuilding up our trees and trying to create the illusion of heat around them 
So by just taking the orange and the golden color, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, just like we just did with the shadows on the cooler side, on the, on the right hand side, we're just trying to add highlights and bumps and knocks on our trees on the hotter side. So it's just the same technique, but all we're doing is using warmer colors. And again, that's gonna hopefully trick the viewer's eyes. So again, just by using a smaller brush and just trying to put in things where the impressions of leaves, the impressions of highlights on the underneath, but again, allowing the underpaint to shine through, allowing the shadows. What you're doing is you're creating texture, you're creating the highlights, these very strong contrasting colors between the brights and the darks. So as I say, the technique is not hard. It's very, very easy. It's just very time consuming. So having things like the right brushes, so having these really thin brushes to create things like branches, to create things like sticks and leaves and things like that, really just does make your life a lot easier by just having a mixture of brushes, just to let the brush and to do the work for you. So a lot of times in the painting tutorials, I've shown you sometimes when you have a really harsh um, bright tone like that yellow and you're going into dark, sometimes you need to create a bridge tone to make the transition less harsh. So your eyes, because your eyes are so good, it doesn't pick up on that. So by mixing that gold color into a little bit of green, so adding a little bit of green to it, you create this almost like olive tone, which is a sort of very yellowy green. And again, all that does is create the illusion of branches, but, but it bridges the two tones together. So it's not as harsh a transition between the darks of the darker greens and the lights of the yellow highlights. Now, as you can see here, I've got a thing called a blender brush. And all I've done is I've got some of the sky color, which was white, a dab of purple and a dab of yellow. And I'm just using it to push those trees back. And cause there's very, very little paint on my brush and it's totally dry, it's given a chalky effect. And all that does is it just pushes those trees into the far distance. You can get these brushes online. You can get um, a set of makeup brushes even for about £10, where you get about 10, 20 of these brushes in there. All different sizes, and they're great for blending your paint. You don't need hardly any paint, no water. Just wipe all the paint off almost. So just have a tiny amount of paint, and all you do is just go over what you've painted. By having a very little amount of paint on it, you just put in a layer over the top and just giving it a nice texture and what that does because it's the matching of the sky it just pushes those tr trees into the further background where i've softened it up i'm just going re over the top and just putting some of the branches back in as i say you'll see a lot in this video how i go back and forth trying things out by just adding that yellow onto that tree now i'm trying to get the light to match. I'm trying to get the light from the background to, to match in the foreground so it looks like the sunlight is wrapping around that tree and to make it look more realistic. So to create these really nice tones you can just use things like orange, a little bit of brown and yellow and you can just use the tones between gold and this sort of tan color and it's a nice contrast but also it looks like heat peering around these bushes, giving it highlights, giving it the illusion of the heat source and texture. Now by taking that olive color that we got earlier, which was um, a bit of orange and some green and mixing the two together, we've got this lovely tone and it's a really nice saturated tone. And we're gonna use that to create the heat on these leaves and bridge it between the darks, the really darks and the really bright highlights. And by leaving some of the underpainting, what we're doing is again, we're just creating the illusion of texture in things like the grass and the bushes. Now to do the opposite, because we're getting nearer to the viewer and obviously we're getting further away from the heat source, we're gonna add some green, some black and some blue to create a very dark tone and we're just going to block in this area of our painting and as you can see what that's going to do is going to frame it so it's going to look like it's getting darker and nearer towards the viewer. 
I must say, this wasn't meant to be a painting tutorial. This is one of the paintings I did myself. And obviously I just thought I would film it. But if you are painting along at home and you're trying to copy it, forget the path. Don't worry about the path because we're not going to use that path. So just paint down to the bottom of your painting in a dark shadow tone just so it fills up the canvas. So all I'm doing now is I'm bridging the darks and the lights by using a bridge tone. So all I've done is mix that olive tone that we used before, which is just green and orange just to warm it up. And all I'm doing is I'm just leaving gaps in the underpainting, but what that does, that tone just brings the darks and the lights together. It's not a too harsh a transition on your eye. And all I'm doing is just using that tone to create the impression of hanging leaves and again just sort of bridge the two contrasting lights and darks. Because again, a lot of this we're going to cover over with our, um, our blender brush. But having the impression of all this shrubbery in the background and all these branches, what it does is it just gives more detail to your work that your eyes pick up on at a later stage. And it just makes your work look more realistic because you'll have this faded detail in the background. Now this painting I really struggled on back and forth. I just couldn't get in the flow state. So here I'm just warming it up with the orange because I kept going back and forth between the hots and the colds. And sometimes in a painting, you just have to get out of your own way. You just have to relax and just let it flow. Think of um, the Frozen song, let it go, let it go. Sometimes you are your own worst enemy by get, being in your own mind, thinking about stuff while you're working. So if you can see here, when, I go, when I'm flowing, I go quick. I can just sense where I need to put highlights. I can just do it without even thinking and it's very hard to teach people this because it's really hard to teach people how to relax but that's when you'll do your best work so all i'm doing is i'm using that orange and yellow tone to create heat because when you're flowing and when you're relaxing knowing where things are you will intuitively be able to do it so anyone who wants to know how to get in a nice relaxed mode i'm not preaching to anyone about how to do it but i have created a video what works personally for me so it might be worth if you want to check it out because you might find it useful so all I'm doing now is I'm just using some of that darker greeny blue color just to add some darker shade and I'm just re putting in the darker brown at the bottom now it's dry I'm just using a blender brush just to highlight light sources so i'm just creating sunbeams now i've got very little paint on my blender brush and i'm just using that brush to create highlights so i'm leaving areas but creating sunlight so i'm creating sunbeams and again just pushing that area back but can you see now by creating all those branches that we just did they're not lost they're creating texture and all i'm doing i'm just putting the highlights onto that ground where the light source would be coming in because as I say I really struggled with this painting I had a reference photo I go on lots of nature walks but I just couldn't get it right I just couldn't get it and I kept going back and forth so all I'm doing now is I'm using some yellow and white and I'm just going around this area just to give it a bit more heat with the blender brush Now where we have blended all that area, we've lost our things in the foreground. So all I'm doing is I'm using that dark green, which is some green, a bit of black and a bit of brown, a tiny bit of blue, just to emphasize things like the darkened corners and the tops of the trees. Because what we're trying to do is a composition. We're trying to have the light effect, but we also want our painting to be framed. We want um, things like our corners to be dark so the viewer stares down the middle so by just adding some darks back to where we've rubbed out and now adding the heat a bit back what we're trying to do is we're trying to frame the composition we have we want to have bits that are wisping away like the background but we still want things in the foreground to draw to the viewers eyes 
because as I say I love to be out in nature I love to uh, photograph when I'm out um, recently I've been going to lots of woods because we've been in lockdown here in the UK so we can go out and exercise and do our social distancing so I've been taking my dog and my daughter and my wife out to um, parks and what I tend to do is go when it's nearly sunset and I try to take lots of photos so you get a really good contrast between the brights the real bright light of the sun coming through the trees and the darks so all I've done here is I've just added a little bit of orange you can use a tone such as burnt sienna that's normally what I paint my canvas as um, that's a really good tone because um, it's a very bright orangey brown it's a great tone to use when applying heat so burnt sienna which is just orange and brown um, is a really good bridge tone to add heat between yellows oranges and dark colors such as your tree trunks so all I'm doing I'm still trying to find my way in the painting I'm still not putting really any detail I'm just using a flat brush and I'm kind of tipping it sideways I'm just trying to use that really dark green to create the impression of leaves while I've got that color on my brush and just use it on the outside of the trees there's nothing special about the brush it's just using it sideways now this is a really good trick I've seen other artists use this and I use it all the time is when you have the sky color go back use a very fine liner and poke holes in your trees now what this does that when the camera refocuses it makes your trees look much more realistic and it makes it look like the sky is shining through so it's just keeping some of your sky color and just using it to create gaps in the trees gaps in the leaves just so your work looks a bit more realistic and the same with the light so in a minute I'll show you but all it is is purple and lots and lots and lots of white that's what I've used for the sky color and I'm just creating holes so as you can see look it just makes it look much more realistic so all I'm doing now is I'm taking some bright white and a blender brush excuse my big fat body but <laughs> I was in the way and I'm just blending where I want the sunlight to be at its harshness and it's really really bright and that's where it's going to come through and then now all I'm doing is I'm using a bright yellow a little bit of white with that yellow and again I'm just trying to put in where I want the harshest part of the light and the highlights to come through now I kind of know where I want everything to be, where I want all the composition to be, where I want all the light source to be. It's a bit easier now. I can start going a bit quicker, I'm starting to find my way. So by just using this yellow and then going back over it with the warm orange, just got a bit more of a transition between the white, the yellow and the orange. Because as I showed you in the previous paint tutorials, all we're trying to do is we're trying to trick your eyes. So look, now we've just added the orange and we've got the real bright. So look, these are going to be areas where the sun is really picking up the light. Now that we can put that sort of olivey green back on it, you've got a really nice contrast between the two tones. It just tricks your eye. If it wasn't for the darks you wouldn't see the lights and if it wasn't for the lights you wouldn't see the dark so the combination of the two is really really important and as I say sometimes it is a bit fiddly sometimes it's a bit annoying sometimes you've got to go back and forth but that's just how we do it so look we're getting some burnt sienna which is just brown and orange and we're going to really emphasize this tree now we're going to outline it because we're going to bring it forwards because we want it to be in the foreground we want it to be next to the viewer and also what that does is it frames it into the viewers eyes so I'm just adding brown and dark blue so brown blue and a bit black at the bottom because that area is going to be cooler and look at that just because it's got the yellow now and the orange underneath it and then where we've put the darks at the bottom at the top we're going to do the same trick on these these ones and same trick here what we're starting to do is bring these trees forward bring them into the viewer now the composition is we're happy with it we're going to start putting all the detail on it 
So all we're doing is we're leaving parts of the underpainting. We're using a fine liner and we're just crowing up that edge of the tree and we're just creating all the rivets and dents in the bark. Can you see how that works? Look at that, really easy to do. So whatever tone you have on your tree, you wanna create it light enough so when you create a darker tone, it complements one another. So by just using a darker tone, so darker tones are things like blue and black and brown that will give you a really, really nice dark outline. And by putting it on these trees, what it does, you can just soften it. Look, by doing things like using my finger, if it's too harsh, add a little bit more white to the mix. Now, all I'm doing now is just the same technique that we did for the sky. What I'm doing is using a blender brush and I've mixed some white with a hint of yellow. And I'm just poking holes again where I want the sunlight to be bursting through those leaves. And it's just a bit warmer than the um, white and purple areas because obviously this is the real bright part of our painting. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to soften areas up. As I keep saying to you, you can buy these blender brushes. They're the same as makeup brushes. And all you need to do is just have them dry and they're really soft to the touch and you put barely any paint on them. Just you can use things like kitchen roll or if you wear scruffy clothes like me like painting clothes and you just wipe it against and look by just pushing down and just really just gently going over what you've painted when it's dry what it does look it just pushes it back just pushes it back just by using the same tone as the sky look at that really really easy technique if anyone watched the um, waterfall painting we did that with the detail to emphasize the waterfall to make it look like it was far back into the background it's a really really easy trick just using hardly any paint have a dry painting and you just go over the top now i think i went over it a bit too much i think i got a bit trigger happy with my blending brush i think i've made it too blended but hey ho that's what how this painting was going <laughs> as i say i was struggling 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 with it now, I'm sorry about the light. As I said, um, we are in a lockdown and it's really dark in London from about 3.30 in the afternoon. So unfortunately, I had to um, turn the lights on. So I'm sorry about the yellow tone to the video. What I've done is I've mixed some blue, some white and some purple. So a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple and lots and lots of white. And I'm just using a really soft, pastel tone to put highlights on all my trees and again I'm just using that sky tone to and a fine liner just to poke holes so it's just all about these this is the difference between painting a, um, a painting tutorial that takes half an hour and painting your real work which takes maybe a day and a half that is the difference like as I say to you sometimes um, a lot of people nowadays they don't have the patience to do anything they probably watch five minutes of the video and fast forward to, to sections of it and they don't have the discipline it takes necessary to do something like this um, they don't have the, dis the discipline needed to um, really really um, work on a skill and as I say none of this is hard it's very tedious in parts it's going back and forth and as I say trying to um, teach you is very difficult at times because as I say a lot of it is intuitive but if you can master your own mind if you can master your discipline and you can um, push through when it gets hard if you can push through um, when you're struggling and keep on trucking so even though the light was bothering me even though things were going wrong in the painting it's mind over matter it's being able to push through it being able to relax as I say you can always see with earphones I'm always jamming out to music trying to get out of my head just trying to flow with the painting and feel my way through it that's all painting is is seeing something in your mind's eye and working from your imagination into reality until it becomes real so all I'm doing now is I'm using some yellow and white and I'm just punching holes again into that texture just to create the illusion 
of some heat on the bushes and leaves. So now that it's got a really bright white underneath it and a really nice tone, I'm just putting some heat back where that light is shining through, where that lovely sunlight is coming through. Now, the right hand side is going to be nearer to the viewer and it's going to be cooler. So we're going to use a shadow tone, which is just blue, a little bit of purple and lots and lots of white. Because this far right tree, they are hardly getting any sunlight. So they're going to be really, really dark in comparison to the ones nearer to the sun. But also because they're closer to the viewer, the shadows are going to be more severe. So they're going to be more dark. So by using some black, some dark brown and some blue, we can outline them because this part of the tree and this nearest tree on the right hand side is going to be in the shade and it's also going to be in the dark because obviously it's not getting as much sunlight. So again, just by knowing four highlights nearer to the sun, you want warmer tones. So things like orange, yellows, reds, light browns and things in the dark, you want cooler tones like purple, blue and things like blacks. And just by adding some shadow, what it does is it brings it forward. Now, don't worry about the path. I totally mucked up. As I say, I was really struggling between my photo and thinking of a composition. And I really, really didn't like it. So I kept leaving it. I kept going away from it. So just darkening up here with some burnt sienna, which is just brown and orange. Again, and darkening up the bottoms in a minute. What that does is it just brings these trees a bit more forward towards the viewer. It just makes them look a bit more closer towards you looking at it. Now, I really didn't like the path I painted. I think it kind of looked like a patio, like a garden path. And I just, it really didn't work. It was too flat. So all I've done, if I excuse my big bum in the way, my my back all I've done is I've got darker as I've moved towards the right hand side so I've added um, more sap green and then added a really dark bluey green towards it and that's my underpainting going into black into that right hand corner so it's a nice transition now all I'm doing is I'm using yellow and light green to create the illusion of grass because originally I was going to paint this painting as just acrylics but as I said to you sometimes when you go to sleep and you wake up and you look at your painting that you thought was good and it turns out to be complete rubbish <laughs> um, you can see things that you didn't notice when you were painting as I say you were too close you're too involved and sometimes taking a step back and sometimes looking at it from a, a, um, a different point of view, you can see where you went wrong. So all I was doing was I was trying to add things like highlights by using different tones such as bright greens, yellows and oranges to create the illusion of grass. And as I say, originally this was meant to be only in acrylics, but if you can see now through the window, there is no light whatsoever. And everything about the paint was just pissing me off to do Drew it was just getting really really annoyed and you can see me walking off and getting frustrated with it all so adding all this grass and all these bits but as I said to you I want you to leave this in the video because I wanted you to see that even the best of us struggle sometimes you just can't polish a turd sometimes you have to go back and you have to um, rework your artwork because sometimes it just doesn't work. It's as simple as that. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's how you become a better artist because you can try things. So what I was trying here was I'm trying to get darker by using uh, more darker greens, by adding blue to my greens as I come towards the end of the canvas, so the right-hand corner. And what that should do is look like it's getting darker and the light is sort of fading away but the, the the grass just looks too flat the problem with acrylics they dry really really flat unfortunately they don't have um, as much realism as oils
So even though um, they're nice paints, they're very easy to use, they're more forgiving, they just dry really, really flat. So they don't have that realism that oils do. And I think um, when I'm adding things like the highlights here, it still doesn't work. It, it, you know, I'm going back and forth, I'm trying to rescue it, but it just doesn't, doesn't click. I think it looks good, don't get me wrong. Most people would be happier if it, and I was trying everything, I was re-blending, I was doing everything. And I think this was about now, about 9, 10 o'clock at night, I was getting angry. <laughs> I had public enemies, some rage against the machine on some Metallica, some limp biscuit, I was getting pissed off. But the sun came out in the morning and it's a new day and winners win, losers moan. So I just thought, do you know what? Get off my pity potty and let's go. First thing in the morning, I was straight back at it. I was like, you know what? As I say, let's get going. So all I did was, um, I tried to keep going in the acrylics and I think that was the problem. I was trying with the acrylics. Sometimes acrylics photograph really well and they look really nice but when you see them in the flesh they just don't look as pretty as oils as I keep saying to you. They don't have the realism that oils do. So I think what, we, what I should have done in hindsight which I'll do in the future I think I should just block it into the least amount, unlike all this where I'm trying to do every single detail and then do oils and all the detail. Because when I do the oil section in a minute, I spent about half an hour <laughs> finishing it off. But hey ho, hindsight's great, isn't it? But I was in a much better mood that morning. I was listening to some more, more chilled music, some Peter Gabriel, some Cindy Lauper, <laughs> some Pixies, some nice stuff. Tones haven't changed, even though I'm going back and forth and reapplying them. Um, it's still very much the same. As I keep saying to you, things like um, yellows and oranges are really, really good for heat. Things like purples and blues are really, really good for things like um, shadows so things like um, the grass by adding little bits of bright green little bits of um, bright yellow and go in with a fine line around things like the trees just taking your time to um, make your work look more pristine and less rough just by adding more detail just by doing these little things really does finish it off so as I say, I think the background is pretty all right. I think the foreground trees I'm happy with. It was the grass and the light effect that I wasn't happy with. I think the three lines coming through kind of looked like Freddy Krueger had slashed through my painting. It was um, it, it it wasn't 3D enough. I think I should have had more light come in between the trees not just so generically free stripes and as I say I was trying to add things like black um, to the bottom corners and to the grass just to make it look more darker as it came towards the viewer but I really didn't like the flatness of it all but the teachings are the same so as I keep saying to you the colors are the same so by doing a underpainting and then by using darker tones to be the gaps and to be the shadows by getting dark as you go towards the bottom of the canvas what it does is it draws the viewers eyes so all I'm doing now is just trying to put in some detail with a fine liner so using um, as it gets up towards the light source the shadows get a bit less harsh so I was using blue and purple and a tiny bit of brown just to make a really nice pastel shadow color because obviously it's nearer to the sunlight so it's not as harsh as the um, real darks and I was using that same tone just a little bit darker just to highlight some of the trees and outline them by just outlining the trees, what it does as well, it just makes them look more 3D. It just gives them a bit more um, definition, things like the bark. 
because even though they're far away, it still just makes them look more realis realistic. So as I say, by just having a nice lighter tone and then just going around it with a fine liner and a darker tone, but not too dark, you don't want to bring those trees too forward. So make sure you have plenty of white in your mix. So a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue and lots of white. And what that does, just that little shadow tone just really emphasizes it and just brings it a bit forward. And just add a little bit of purple and lots of white. And you can do the same with these trees. And just darken up areas here. So it's a nice composition, there's nothing wrong with this painting. If this was your painting, I guess you'd be quite happy with it. But as I say, with this just wasn't necessarily a painting tutorial. I'm happy for you to all watch at home how I was going about it. But this was one of my original paintings and I was not happy with it, as I keep saying. <laughs> you can tell with my tone. I was just getting annoyed. That's too damn scruffy, even though I was trying to add darks. So just up in the top corner, I was adding some really dark green just to frame it. And again, just to bring that branch forward. So I was trying my best to rescue it. And there's some bits I like, as I say, there is some bits I do like. Like this effect now that I was doing, just darkening up that corner. I do like the sky. I do like, as I say, the composition. But it was this area, it was from the tree line down, the grass basically. So even trying to add some heat to match the colours. Just trying everything you can. So eventually what I did was I went away and walked my dog, took my daughter to the park and just completely did something away from painting to clear my mind just to not be annoyed. And as I said to you, that you'll come back and you'll see it from a different point of view and you'll see the things that will work, like this orange kind of effect kind of worked, I thought. The sort of orangeness coming down the hill and sort of working, but the grass itself just looked rubbish. So by taking some time off and completely doing something away from painting, it's a good way to clear your mind. So as I say, it doesn't look bad. And as I say, it photographs a lot better than it looked in real life. So if you saw that on Instagram or something, you probably go, oh, that's bloody good. But if it was in a gallery, not so much. So let's put some oils on it. Now, oil paints are fantastic. They are so much brighter than acrylics and they have so much more texture. So by just using some sap green and adding a little bit of blue to the mix, you can get darker. So what I was doing, exactly the same technique as the acrylics, but these look how much stronger these tones are. They are less flat, they are much more realistic and they are much more brighter and much more darker. So I should have done this four hours before. <laughs> but as I say, hindsight is great. And you learn from you, your mistakes. So adding more blue to the mix and a little bit of black as I go down, you're getting darker as you get towards the bottom of the canvas. And what that's doing is it's tricking the eye, just like we did with the acrylics, same technique. We want to get darker as we get towards that right hand corner. And it's just looking so much better already just by adding the oils on the top. So as now I'm starting to cook, I'm starting to flow. And as I say, the teachings of this video are universal. It works for everything. So as you are getting more closer to the light, the shadows will get harsher. But so by adding white, blue, a little bit of brown and um, purple, the shadows aren't so harsh as they get towards the, um, the, the sunlight. So all I was doing now, I was 
re-putting the oils on the top. Now, as you can see, they were so bright, it was too bright, so I had to wipe it out and add some white to the mix. So, plenty of orange, a little bit of yellow, and lots and lots of white. And this looks so much nicer. This looks so much better than it previously did already. Oils are fantastic. As I say, blocking in a painting in acrylic is so quick. You can dry it with a hairdryer. You can work so quick. So when you have a composition, acrylics are brilliant for working guns blazing. But they do not have the realism that oils have so by combining the two you can make absolutely brilliant work so again i really do start now to figure it out by using the same tones the olive green but just now in oil paints so where there's bridges between lights and darks all i'm doing is using that olive green to mix the really really bright oranges and the really really dark greens together by just adding orange and green together just to mix the two tones so we get a nice nice composition and a nice transition and then just by adding some more sap green just for the darks over the top just gently blending it in the great thing with oils they're so slow to dry you can really easy blend tones so you can just go over the top and just blend those tones together so as I say, once I figured it out, I started to cook, I started to flow, I got out of my own way, had some tunes going, and away we went. Now as I say, I don't really use expensive brushes, but I am using a really, really thin fine liner here. And all I'm doing is just putting the implication of things like grass. It's very tedious, it's quite long-winded, but that brush does all the work for you. Things like a really fine liner, things like a fan brush, which I will use in a minute, I'll show you. They are fantastic for grass because what they do is they're so fine and they've got so many bristles, things like a fan brush. You can just um, imprint the illusion of grass. So just by um, using them, it does all the work for you. So, as I say, now with the oils, I'm just trying things out. I'm seeing if that looks too harsh or not too harsh, if the colors are too bright, and I think it was too harsh. So, it's just, just taking the time to figure it out. So by getting some white and a little dab of yellow, so it's predominantly white, but just a little bit of yellow. What I'm doing now, I'm just going to create the illusion of the grass and the shrubbery that the light is hitting. And all I'm doing is every so often is I'm just leaving gaps where the acrylic paint is underneath because it's kind of nice to leave these gaps. And what that does by using this really bright highlights, it looks like really strong light is hitting those branches of those trees and making it look like they're popping in the sunlight and again look by just using my finger just to smooth it out I'm just putting in the impression of the light and again with the same with the sunlight just going around neating everything up putting those holes in that we did previously so the techniques are all the same it's just using oils now just to make it look more realistic. So as I say, I really didn't like my Freddy Krueger sunbeams. I think it would look better if some were behind the trees and some were in front. So have a mixture between some coming through and some um, peeking out from behind, rather than all three being out in front. And I think what that does is it makes it again look more realistic. So making some of the trees come forward and making some of them go back just gives it that more realism in the piece. So what I was doing here was I was outlining them. Now that I put the um, original yellowy orange tone, I was outlining them with a really nice pastel purple, which was pastel, um, which I made from purple, white and blue. And what that did was it really, really made them look much more realistic. So I just thought, mm, that kind of works. Now, 
And as the tone just adds a little bit more blue, as I said to you, we're going to have some shadows, but I don't want them to be overbearing. I don't want them to be too harsh. So what I've done is I've just blended them into the orange. So it's the same tone that I was just using now to, um, um, to outline those trees, but I've added a little bit more blue to it. And as I say, I'm just using the really light part of my brush and I'm just using my finger just to blend it in because I don't want those shadows to be too harsh. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to have, coming down the hill into the grass, I'm trying to have the mixture between lights and darks just like we did in the sky. But at the same time, not make them too harsh. And again, just using a dry brush and just some of that sunlight color just to make it look like the sunlight is just beaming out of those woods. Just using a really, really nice flat brush. And if it's too strong, you can just use a wipe, baby wipe, and you can just come over the top. So just using some oil paint now on these sunbeams rather than acrylic paint, just to make them softer using the blender brush. So say things like baby wipes are great if you put too much paint like here where you put too much on you can just use that blender brush and use your finger just to take some of the paint off use a baby wipe if you need to just to like soften it just push it into the canvas so just take your time just rework things if you have to that's the fantastic thing about oil paints if your acrylic painting is dry, you can just wipe them off with a baby wipe. So just take your time, put them over the top, see where you have to rework areas, see where you need to apply oil paint to make the areas look brighter or lighter. And let's say these blender brushes are fantastic because they are so soft and the oil paint is so soft. You can just spread it and if you put too much just use your finger just to gently blend it into the canvas. So those, so those beams are starting to look a bit better. And I'm just adding pure white, some oil paint, just to really emphasize that sunlight coming through those trees. So that looks a lot better. So let's just put in our trees again. And I'm just putting in where the heat is gonna be at its strongest, where the sunlight is really hitting those trees. So it's got a nice layer of that orangey yellow that we've been using. And just, again, using the oils over the top. Just the same purpley tone and again just here on this tree and look at that look how much the highlight looks more prominent than it did before with the acrylics so much better just from using that highlight really really brings it forward really really brings it across so much brighter than previously that's the great thing about oils they are just so much brighter so again let's just put these knocks with the highlights on these sort of birch trees in the background so we're just doing the same techniques so it's exactly the same as the acrylics as I say we just now we've got everything where we want everything to be it's just taking our time and just reworking everything just so it looks much much prettier so every section of the painting every tree Every bit is just finished to a higher standard now with the oils. So again, just add in some blue, so blue, purple and white. But I think I went a bit too overboard with the blue, so I'm going to add a little bit of green in a minute, I'll show you. And again, it's just to put the bark on. As you can see clearly now, just see how much brighter they are these oils they are just so fantastic so it's a bit too blue it doesn't look really tree like so adding a little bit of green to that mix just sucks the color out a bit so just adding a little bit of green here 
There we go. Same mix, just add a little bit of green to it, just makes it look a bit more saturated, a bit more realistic. And what that does is it makes our tree look more real, yay! And just getting some black, and literally, because it's in the nearest to the viewer, it's going to be the darkest, so I'm using some jet black just to outline it and give it a nice definition. I'm just using some of the background sky colour and a fine liner just to create a clear definition between the trees just so again from afar they just look more prominent now they've been outlined now that they're darker and because you have the sky color in between it just makes everything stand out a little bit more so to say it's, it's not rocket science it's not hard it's just time consuming it's keep on going till your painting looks the way you see it in your mind's eye and that separates the winners from the losers is literally that is what it's all about so look here's a fan brush so look a big fan like brush loaded up with that orange color and i'm just tapping it against the canvas to create the illusion of grass just give it a bit of texture nothing major just up in that top corner and just around areas that i just want to highlight just a little bit of grass and again just using that really thin fine liner almost like a needle that brush just to put in little bits of highlights so again just creating little areas where i want the sunlight to be peeking through and the same with the orange So just creating the illusion of grass, look, just coming down that hill, just going back and forth between the two tones. And now that we've got the sort of hill effect, now we've created that sort of hill effect going down, we've got the nice contrast between the shadows. So I'm gonna put in the outlines just to really emphasize and bring this tree forward towards the viewer. So just paint over that bark just with some black and blue and that will bring that lovely tree forward. The same with these ones, but obviously not as dark a tone. Finishing it off now, so I'm just putting some orange grass just here. I'm just re-emphasizing it with a little fan brush just to make a nice contrast between the shadows and coming down that hill. So, but just using a fan brush, fan brushes are brilliant. As I say, a lot of these brushes do the work for you. It just gives the impression of texture on your grass. So, but just blending it with my fingers and just using the fan brush to emphasize these highlights and bring that light source, that orange down the hill. It just, it's just to finish it off and it's just easing up on the brush and just bringing it down, just to lighten it up and just make it look like it's wisping out. Now all I've got here is some a fan brush with some sap green and it's just to go around this edge and it's just to again frame the painting just so that edge has got a clear definition. So again, it just frames the piece. And again, just using the exact same color, some sap green, just creating a shadow, not too much, just on these trees here, just because they're gonna create just a bit of shadow. But here it is all finished and I think that looks so much prettier than the acrylic version. It just looks so much more natural, the light effect, the grass, and yeah, it just looks so much better. So there you go guys. Actual one of my original paintings for all you guys at home to see how I go about painting it. And as I say, I hope you've learned some tricks and tips of the trade, just little things like using a blender brush to push the background back how to use pastel colors, how to use darker tones to bring things forward to the viewer, things like darkening your corners, things like how light works, and just things like oil paints, just a bit more softer, a bit brighter, a bit more pungent, things like the darks are darker, and they just have that more realism, they have a more realistic tone because of the sheen and the, and the actual texture of them. So just by watching an original painting, it's like anything in life, it seems daunting and hard because you don't know about it, but the more you know about it, the more easy 
it will get to you. And as I say, there's lots of bits in the painting. You see me, this is a guy who paints every day. There's parts of the painting I struggle with. There's parts of it that I had to come back to, maybe sleep on it and come back to it with a fresh open mind and try something else. And that's normal. Sometimes in life, you're gonna have things that set you back. Sometimes in life you, and, and your artwork, you're gonna have things that you're gonna have to jig about. And that's totally fine. I don't know an artist that doesn't do that. So a lot of the times when we're doing these painting tutorials, it's some easy steps. It's from A to B. And this is, we're gonna do this first and you're gonna get that. And that's just sometimes not how art works. Sometimes you just have to go with your intuition and just keep going until you find your way out. And that is all it's all about. So I hope you found the video useful. I hope you get to see what original painting looks like. And I hope you can create your own version at home. Remember, if you are creating your own version at home, please tag me on Instagram at Paintings so I can share it on my Hall of Fame. I like to share people's versions of my artwork because I think that's a really nice thing. And what it does as well, it gets me to know more artists all around the world. So it's a great way to network and for us to all meet and chat. So. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and please check out my painting tutorials. So thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.